History for Fools podcast, Pirates of the Caribbean podcast position. I don't know. Pirates podcast. If we were to do a Pirates podcast only, what would be the cheesy name for it? A good name. The... uh, the podcast of the Caribbean podcast. The Scurvy podcast. The podcast of the Caribbean. That's that would actually be a good name. The podcast of the Caribbean. Podcast. Of, welcome to the podcast of the Caribbean podcast. The Plunder podcast. Welcome to the Pillaging podcast. Hey pirates! Hey ho ho ho! Your mother's a hoe to me. That's how it was. That's what they said. Did you make up songs? I'm, I don't know. I don't know. Yo, ho, 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 a pirate life for me. Man, you showed me early, uh, not like an hour ago uh-huh. the most boringest thing ever, bro. <laughs> Did you not? Was that not appealing to you at all? Hell no, bro. That fucking you that shit. pay me to go watch that guy that sing. That sea shanty guy? He gets paid to do that. Pirate songs are called sea shanties. You know why they call them sea shanties? Because I shan't be going to see that. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how accurate the sea shanties are. Like, I don't know, like, how fucking, like, the, like, because it's like, I don't think you could remember a song. Because it's not like they had a tape of it, and they're like, oh, this is what it sounded like back then. So I don't even know how accurate that fucking, that sea shanty shit is. Yeah, man, I think I'll, I'll just be a pirate. But I think the song, now, now when I think about it, I spy, shoo spy. It sounds like ba blow the man down. Oh, okay. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. that that's a pirate song, right? Blow uh, the man down. I, I believe it is. I, I, it like it certainly comes from that. Cause you blown a man up, right? I mean, it's a different thing back then than what it is now. When you're blowing a man. Up. That's funny. Cause if it's a pirate song. And you were talking about the fucking ears Oh, earlier. we were talking about the fucking ears. The last episode. Yeah, people were not happy that I said that pirates were gay. I know, man. But but it makes you wonder, man, because they're, 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 they're really like laid back and liberal, you know? Right. Well, I mean, it was a different time, man, and different cultures are different things. You know, like... Um, Captain Sea Hag, bro. We're going to talk about a pirate later where her and her husband actually married a 15-year-old kid... And they both fucked him. So I mean, like you know, that's that's the time. I mean, it's like let's talk about that family first. Different times, different cultures. The um, but let's read about let's, let's find out first what everybody want to know, because I know that in the Pirates of the Caribbean, yeah, like they had parlay. Because you mentioned the last episode, you said parlay, right? And uh, cause the, uh, the pirates follow their own private code, just like there's a code for like in prison. Remember, we were talking about prison gangs. They had their codes, you know, their prison right, codes yeah. that they follow and their the bay. Those are the rules that keep that keep them together. Reglas. Everybody has rules, man. I don't, I don't give yeah. a fuck where, unless you're a, a nomad. But if you get, but then you, when you, you could be a nomad. But then once you have a friend involved, now there's gonna be rules. Right. Now to be, you gotta be like Butch. He's a, yeah, Butch. Well, he's a, he's a one man gang. Like you could tell if Bush had a, a, a jacket on the back, it'll be a wolf, and it says Lone Wolf, Lone like wolf. Lenny from Laverne and Shirley. <laughs> Cause uh, I see you, bro. Like <coughs> I, I see you when I when like before I met you, I knew I was gonna like you because I what I saw in you was uh-huh. something that nobody saw, bro. I saw a guy that would ju- that would not start a fight, but jump into a fight that got nothing to do with him. Yeah, I'm that guy. <laughs> Accurate. Yeah, that's. <laughs> and that to me is a dangerous friend I want to have. <laughs> Sometimes it's for the joy of fighting. <laughs> that's just some girl yeah, told me that one time. Hey, you're fucking stupid. <laughs> I never see you start a fight, but I see you join fights that had nothing to do with that's, you. Yeah, dude. What are you? Because he. Yeah, that's... Well, you should have told me in the beginning the kind of man you want is a leader. Right. Because yeah. I am not a captain. I'm a, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a shipmate. What do you call that guy that does that? A loser, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But see, getting back to um, 
uh, the pirates, when I was doing um, that my special in San Jose, we used those bikers, the others. The others. They have a big clique, but they got others in in um, all, all over the country. It's a bicycle country. group, right? Yeah. yeah. That big fixed up beach cruisers, bro, like low riders. With shit. like ape hangers. Oh my god, dude. I was too fat to ride that bike. It was scraping. Really? But they're bicycles. I uh I had one that had ape hangers and they're I switched out the ape hangers as soon as I bought it because it was fucking annoying. Super hard to ride those things. So there's, there's a band called Las Cafeteras and they opened up for me at the when I when I did the Novo Theater. Um, awesome band, Las Cafeteras. Check them out. Very, very progressive rock um, tropical band. I would say they're a rock band to me. And they have a song that they sampled. They have a great song that I use for my special. And it's called, um, it starts off with a Mayan language and then it switches over to. Yo no soy man, marinero, soy capitán, soy capitán, yeah. soy capitán. Ba, ba, la, ba, 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 la, 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 whatever. But um, when uh, cause I, I had to, I wanted to, I had to pay, I had to pay credits, you know, where credit is due for these songs. Right. So when I said um, y volver, volver, I had to pay for that. Oh, really? So oh, I you found, have to pay money yeah, as, uh, like to the you, artist. Like BMI or royalty yeah. or whatever. Whoa. Yeah. So um, <laughs> also I learned that um, if I had to pay if I if I did more because I, when I did the Salvadorian accent, I did it like just speaking like Elvis. No. I, I would have to pay the Elvis legacy. Really. Because they own all the Elvis impersonation, everything. Like so, if you impersonate Elvis, you gotta TV. give a little bit yeah. of your money to Elvis. Yeah, man, they don't allow pirating. Whoa. <laughs> what about profiteering? Hey. Hey. I'm a privateer, Ray. I only pro- I borrowed it. <laughs> so um, so that song, bro, it, that song, you know, Soy Marinero, Soy Capitan. Yeah. It's about a rebellion and a mutiny on a ship. Oh, is it really? Yeah, on a pirate ship. Is the ship called La Bamba? No, it's called La Amistad. No, nah, I don't know. Oh, okay. I don't know what it's called, but it's a it's a it's a revival song. No way! Yeah. Wow, that's you, fucking you look great. Look it up. You Google right here. Uh, but anyways, let's read about the, the pirate codes. Yeah, you want people, people want to know about the pirate codes. People want to know about the pirate codes. So the pirates had a set of codes. It was, was uh, there a lot of them. Uh, it's you know what's crazy is as I was reading this, um, the first pirate code was written by a guy named Bar- Bartolomeu Portuguese in the early 1660s. Is the first pirate. And then everybody kind of adopted all the way down to Holy Gold man. and like Blackbeard and those guys. And this is basic, basically what it is. Um, Bellamy too. And Bellamy. And, well, Bell- so this is Barth- Bartholomew, Roberts, Bellamy, Hal Davis, and Thomas Ansis. Uh, and and Bonnet. Kind of. Uh, so every man has a vote in affairs of the moment. Has equal title to fresh provisions or strong liquors at any time sees and may use them at pleasure unless it's a scarcity. Everybody on the ship? Everybody on the ship. Not an uncommon thing. Trust me, man. Those rules right there will never be allowed on a merchant ship. No, not now. Because nobody, no, no, even back then. Even back then. No. Oh, yeah, because like. Nobody got, there was no equal rights on a merchant ship. Fuck no. You could starve on that ship, bro. Yeah, everybody. Get whipped. Everybody's allowed a provision. So you're well fed. Um, and then uh, for good of all, fucking well, just eating sugar and shit. A retrenchment, meaning if you don't like the rules, you could re- revote. Uh, or if you don't like the enforcer of the rules, you could revote them. Every man, say, rule number two: every man to be called fairly in turn by list on board of prizes, because they were on these occasions allowed to shift of clothes. But if they defrauded the company to the value of a dollar in plate, jewels, or money, marooning was their punishment. If a robbery was only betwixt one another, they contented themselves with slitting the ears and nose of him that was guilty and set him on shore in an uninhibited place, but somewhere where he was sure to encounter hardship. So they gave him a puto mark before they, before they left him there. <laughs> so if you see a guy walking around with his ear cut off, that guy fucked over his crew and they marooned him, but he survived. So they like so they're not just gonna leave you on the island to survive. So that's why those pirates had a little parrot huh, covering up that ear. 
Captain go? Puto, eh? <laughs> Number three. Fucking Captain Maricón over here, eh? <laughs> Fuck you, Hurtado. Fuck you, Admiral Hurtado. <laughs> that's uh, a, that's but that's a, that's the pirate ship rules, right? Yeah. But you gotta be a moron to be to be one of those people on to a pirate steal ship. Steal from your own men, dude. And everybody, because like again, it shows equally everybody gets what they deserve. Uh, number three, no person to game at cards or dice uh, or money, so you couldn't gamble on ships. It was like considered like bad luck, very taboo. Um. Number four, the lights and candles to be put out at 8 o'clock at night. If any of the crew after that hour still remained inclined for drinking, they were to do it on the open deck in the dark. So they, the reason for that was because you don't want to be seen at night. You know, you got your lights on. It's fucking dark, dude. Someone could roll up on you. Not a good thing. Uh, number five, to keep their peace, pistols and cutlass clean and fit for service. That makes sense. Number six, no boy or woman to be allowed amongst them. If a man were to be found seducing any of the latter sex and carried her to sea disguised uh, as a man, he was to suffer death. What does that mean, man? Meaning, like, a lot of guys back then would, like, uh, they would want to bring their wives or girlfriends with them ashore. I hate those comics. And, and so... <laughs> <laughs> you do it. You do it five minutes, dog. <laughs> Why are you bring you bring girl? thirty people. Why are you bringing your girl, bro? Yeah, exactly. Why are you make her come all the way out so you can do? Did five you leave minutes you there? after the show? She's gonna sit there in the audience and yeah, dude. Anyway, to get hit on by all the comics, <laughs> they didn't go up. So a lot of guys would bring their wives and disguise them as men, and they would fucking and then. Uh, no wonder would, the ship sunk. Okay. So, so if they did that, because also women were considered uh, bad luck on a ship. <laughs> What the <laughs> fuck is wrong with this world back then? This is, why they, this is why they're gay, dude. This is why they're gay. Hey, you know what? Let's not have women on the ship with bad luck, but let's all have let's, butts. Let's fuck each other in the ass. Butt caneer sex. <laughs> Man, there was no future for women back then. No, bro. It was property. property. It, was, it was either a, a, a wench or a bride, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's it, dude. But if your family was poor, there was dirt few... poor, and they knew your wife, your daughter can't be married off. Right. She just becomes a maid for the household. There's huh? few, few women in power at that time, and there was like, you know, we're gonna talk about them. There's a couple of lady pirates. Because I know that even back then, if a woman went to go to school, she would have to dress up like a little boy. If right. there were, yeah. if there was a school, right, right. I don't yeah. think there was no schools. Now, well. You were lucky if you got to go to school. Like rich kids went to school. Rich kids learned to read. Everybody else, the Ill illiteracy was majority of people. So that's why, um, I guess, the skull and a black flag was good enough for people who didn't know how to read. Because you saw that, okay, that's death. Hey, bro, you, that thing's coming at you. Even if you, you can't be stupid. And not know that a black flag means death right back then. Right. Because they, they couldn't just wrote, they, they could have wrote death, so the, but not everybody got it. So the one we see is actually um, with the bones, the skull and crossbones. Um, that was one person's version of, of it. Um, and it was actually swords. It was Jack Rackham. And that's the one we used. Look at but, you throwing out pirate were, names nobody ever heard of. There was so many ones that were like, dude, uh, B Blackbeard had one with like, I think it was like an hourglass, a skeleton, and a, a spear pointing at an arrow, uh, a spear pointing at a heart that was bleeding. Oh, that flag would have not scared the shit out of me, man. See, that would I would I, I would have attacked that one, eh? See, that one would scare the shit out of me. Because it's like, you're going to die. Like, I'm coming to kill you. I would have been like, let's get this guy, man. He's a scientist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ready to keep going? Uh, yeah. Number eight, no striking one another on board, but every man's quarrel to be... Oh, sorry, I didn't do number seven. To, de to desert the ship, our, uh, their quarters in battle was punished by death or ruining. So basically... Heard a seal back there. You can't take, you can't take off. Uh, no striking one another on board, but every man's quarrels to be ended on shore at sword and pistol. If so that, both the miss, they come to their cut cutlasses and he is declared the victor who draws the first. Is pistol. that is that sword and is sword and pistol? Is that the pistol when they when they when they walk two paces and turn around or what's yes. that? Yes. So they 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 do it. They walk like fifteen paces, 
and then you turn around, you shoot at each other, and then when neither of you hit each other, which is the most likely outcome because those guns were super inaccurate, they throw the gun, they pull the sword, and then they fight. And the first blood, which could be me just cutting your hand or fucking, you know, diving into your heart, the, ends the fight. So depending on how friendly you were before you got into the fight, depends on whether you were going to die or not. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Okay. Uh, that was number eight. Number nine. No man to talk of breaking up their way of living. Till each had shared 1,000 pounds, if in order to do this, any man should lose a limb or become crippled in their service, he was to have $800 out of the public stock and for less lesser hurts proportionately. How much is a 1,000 pounds? Are they, are they talking gold, silver, or what? Um, I think they're like translating this, but back then it was called... Um, Chillings. Well, okay, so so Pieces of Eight was what it was called as a nickname because you would break it up. It was like just... Like break a, up that eighth, homie. It was like a gold piece, and it was actually called... Oh, God, a reek. You're chilling me. Like a Reclado. I can't remember, man. I don't remember the exact name of it. Rialto. It was a Rialto. And that's what they, so those were, that was the like normal like currency. A doubloon was a little bit bigger. It was like more of a 50 cents piece. It was a, like a heavier uh, like uh, thing. And then they actually had ducats. Ducats were bars of silver. <clears throat> okay. Number 10. The captain and quartermaster to receive two shares of the prize. The master boatswain and gunner, one share and a half. And the, upper, uh, the other officers, one and a quarter. So that's just breaking up their shares a little bit bigger than the How many of these pirates knew all these codes, bro? Because I'm pretty sure some of them were, like, getting less than that. Well, I mean, yeah, dude. There's you guys. have to be a fair-ass captain, huh? Well, you know, I think the thing, man, is that you're not going to find a lot of cheating because captains were under scrutiny, too. Like, if you didn't... They were voted on anyways, right? They were voted right? on. And there's a lot of times where they were... Because like, mutiny's on the bounty, what it's all about. <laughs> yeah, well, because mutinies can happen. And really, the rule is, and I think it's in this one, is that you have to wait till you get to shore to bring up a grievance with your captain and, and vote him out. You can't do it uh, out at sea. So, uh, but, but mutinies happen all the time. Captains were thrown overboard. Captains were hung. Captains were skinned. Uh, um, these um, there's one account where a captain was uh fucking basically torn apart by hands. By hands. By hands. Dirty ass fingers, bro. <laughs> I don't think he had to worry about infection after all that. I would imagine because I know, man, I've had bad teeth, you know, in this century. You know? Right, yeah. <laughs> the century of toothpaste and toothbrush. Yeah. The century of toothpaste Me too, I have missing and teeth. dental and yeah. and um and fucking free dental if you want to wait all day in the county. Right. <laughs> yeah. And my teeth are still fucked up. My teeth are fucked but up. But now they're good. But um then back then, dude, like these guys they were, they were just so having sex with women and no condoms. Um what I was gonna say earlier is buccaneers used to smear pig fat on their whole body to protect them from flies. And so imagine being in the hot ass Bermuda sun and you've got pig fat on you. And it's cooking in your face. And, and it's like it's bro, it's like glossed over on you at this point. You're dark. Bro, you're never you're not you're not cleaning your crotch every day, bro. You're not cleaning your dick off. And you're out there walking around, you pull up on a whore, and you're like, what's up, let's do this. Your face looks like John Voight in that movie Heat. <laughs> Show that picture, Philip. He looks like Bill Burr. <laughs> ah, that's fucking good, bro. That was good. Um, all right, next one. Um, 11, the musicians... The, this is I. This is I love this one. The musicians to have rest on the Sabbath day, but the other six days and nights, none without special favor. So there was shanties. There were guys that constantly played all the time. And I do know that the point of music was to keep rhythm, you know, of the ship, so you could work. You could, you, you know, you like because there's constantly people working throughout the the time that the ship is is sailing. So uh, the I think the musicians were there to help keep time and keep the morale up. Just wine, crime, and dine. That's it. That's all the rules, man. There's another uh, articles of r rules written by John Phillips 
at the same time who is like the Captain Phillips. Yeah. Um but it's 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 pretty much the same shit. So um so the last time we were talking, uh, we talked about uh, Sir Francis Drake. He was a privateer, and I know that on the, on, uh, the Republics of Pirates that um, they used to hire the the English would hire um, regular sailors too, right, to go rob Spain and vice versa, huh? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's a constant game of hiring. Poor, indigent, hungry people to fuck, but, but fuck over were, each other's government. Well, how long did this war with um, with um, Spain last and and Dutch? Uh, that was, I think, the Ten Years' War. So ten years. So when these guys stopped fighting, you know, is that was that when they became pirates? That's when the pirates started. That's when the, the, the Golden, the, age golden started. Age, the real Golden Age yeah, of pirates. But back then, they were like they were like half pirate, half privateers, right? Yeah, because you remember me talking about buccaneers. Yeah. So there was buccaneers and privateers at that at that time. So now what year what year is the golden age of pirates? Um uh, let me dig back into the See uh, paper was scarce back then, so Bush has to get paper from <laughs> wherever he can. Eh? Like he got this paper man from uh from a rum and coke he bought in Nassau. So the the, the, the golden age started around the sixteen eighties. But it pretty much ended before the American Revolution, huh? Yes. Yeah. Because it was better shit. Well, it was everything was a, it was and now uh, it was. I mean, there's no need for it anymore now because it, everything's like, like because nobody's gonna buy shit off you no more. Well, you don't need to pr- produce sugar in in Virginia, and you don't need to bring sugar to Virginia because Virginia is producing its own sugar. You like now now these cities are becoming more advanced, and there's no there's not as much stuff coming across the Atlantic. And you know, and, and now there's and and because because the the stuff that is coming is very scarce, there's more emphasis on the navy, and and so like uh, all pirates were chased down at the end of the era, uh, and th- actually there was no piracy for almost like a hundred years or something like that. Like no, no, sorry, fifty years because that's when we're going to talk about the Asian pirates. But yeah, for a while there was like just no pri- piracy. Because er- industries had started to come up, people had started to automate things. You know, you had like uh, the in- you had like what is it called industrial stuff happening. I wanted to ask you about this shit, man. I saw it on your magazine here. Um, but but what you what you were saying before, what you were asking about was um, yeah. So there's no more war. These guys who are privateers, there's seventy percent uh, loss of jobs at the time. The unemployment rate is seventy percent. At the time, okay, <coughs> all these guys need work. <coughs> That's when you have like the union of horny gold, Blackbeard, Henry Avery, bro. Let's talk about Henry Avery. That's the man right here. We both liked the story separately, and then we both started to read. About That's funny. It, how, yeah. what, how was your story? Because him and him and um, Bush and I, we have two different versions of yeah. Hen- Henry Avery. Because right here in this book. It's spelled with an E. Right. Every. Like every. Every. Yeah. And then um, and my book is pronounced Avery, like Avery. Right. With an A. Um, so the version that I actually got was somewhat similar to yours, but it didn't Arr. it didn't talk about that um, that they had that all these women wrote letters and stuff like that. Um, their families. It was the the, the the history that I had gotten from it, and it was actually pretty brief. Was that it was this dude who was really upset with a lot of other guys that had been on the ship for a while. They weren't getting fed. They weren't getting paid. They uh, they did a quick mutiny where they killed the fucking captain, and then they took off with the ship, and then they plundered for a while, and then they hit this huge ship that was worth like what would be now a hundred million. Henry Avery, he he, they um. So tell me your version, because your version's way more. Way more interesting. Henry Avery was um, they were supposed to go um, the, the, they were supposed to go get a letter from somewhere to go um, be privateers. Right. Right. And um, they were waiting for the letter from England and never came. And then um, letter England just said um, forget about it. And then they became. 
they became prisoners of Spain instead. Okay. And they oh, because they were in harbor. Yeah. For like weeks. They were in harbor for months, bro. Months. So the, finally, um, Henry Avery and a bunch of other sailors got together and said, "Man, we're gonna just get the fuck out of here, man. Right? Because I don't want to work. I don't want to be a sailor and work for free forever for these Spaniards and be a prisoner." So um, those fools, they they went on to be to to be pirates because because they had no other choice. You know, they were very wanted men for escaping. So um, they were supposed to be privateers and take down um, ships that belonged to Spain. So now instead, they became taking down ships that belonged to everybody. So in my version, I read, these fools went out okay. and they captured uh, some, um, I don't know if, what, what the, an Indian or... Yeah, it's an Indian ship called the Fatah Muhammad. Yeah, they, they captured a little one first. Yeah. And they had like a little bit of gold, right? Right, and yes. then And then that fool said, nah, man, they tortured those fools. Yeah. And they said, nah, man, it's a bigger ship. Right. So they went to other ship and they tortured that ship. Right. And then they said, nah, man, there's even a bigger ship. Right. And the, and the other ship... Was like um, this was the kind of history they don't tell you in America, but this was an Indian dude. So, oh man, like it was like the oh, what what they call those dudes, emperor or um, probably like a sultan or Maharaja. An, like, Maharaja. He was the sultan yeah. of swing. <laughs> he was the sultan of somewhere, man. Yeah, he's like a sultan. Like he was traveling yeah. with soldiers and like a hundred of his concubines. Right. Yeah, he had like a harem with him. He had a whole harem with him, man, and he had gold, he had spices, he had fur, this fool had um, cotton, do you know how tea. Much, do you know how much money he had on him at the time? 600000 uh in gold. Do you know how much that relates to now? How much? $100 million. Yeah, so they separated all... The, so, um... So, um, and uh, my book, there's two versions. They, they say that um, supposedly... Um, King uh, Henry Avery ended up marrying um, the oh, the the right. the the princess, the Sultan's daughter. Yes. And then they became um, he became like a king, and they disappeared with all that cash. Right. But in reality, they raped everybody. They raped everybody. Everybody. And there was a woman there. They raped and killed the whole. Boat there was a woman there on a on a boat, who who um who rather um, there were, the women were throwing themselves over the boat because they don't want to get raped and then live in shame with their family as a person that was raped. That's crazy. So, like, yeah. I'm pretty sure, man, these the sharks were f following pirate ships and slave ships. Yeah, yeah. Because they were tossing humans over all the time. This is a really, really awful one that I read. Um, That's your, what's your version? Oh, and the, my version was that King um, Henry Avery. yeah. They all separated their gold. Everybody got like a thousand each or twelve thousand. Everybody got good amount. And when they get, they went to Nassau, and um, they try to pay, they pay off the governor there, and they lived there for a while. But but um, the a lot of the pirates that were on that ship, they were walking around and doing a lot of bad shit and paying everybody off, kind of like cartels. Right. Yeah, and. Um, yeah, and there were bra and and their bra and their bra other coins had Sultan on it already. Right. Yeah. So they knew it was stolen gold. Right. And once that Sultan got to wherever they were going, there was a hit on that fool, bro, from left and right. The right. British, on, Spain, on Avery. and Avery. Oh, he was the most wanted pirate in, and that's the version I read too. That he was the most wanted pirate at one time. They took over 53 ships in one month, I think. Yeah. If I'm mistaken. Before they did that one sack. And in my version, that fool went, by the time he got to land, he was trying to sell some of the gold he got. And some 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 regular fools robbed his ass and they didn't give him hardly what he deserved. Okay. And they ended up dying a real poor guy. And they told him that, well, you might be a pirate in the ocean where pirates in land. No way. Okay. So the one, the version that I read. He was almost aggravated to where he didn't get he didn't get caught. He just disappeared. Like he just he's like it like because the title of the chapter like a was fart in the wind, huh? The, like a fart in the wind. The title of the chapter was the most successful pirate king, and that was his nickname, the King of Pirates. That's what because he was like the first guy to like overtly go out and fucking 
do that at that era, in that era. So, fucking uh, Charles Avery, dude. And, and um, Charles, that that was the Henry Avery, right? Henry Avery. Henry yeah. Avery, sorry, yeah. Who was the Who was the um, the pirate ship that will freak everybody out by getting butt naked? The whole ship will get butt naked no and way. only have their guns have to look and their up. swords, no, bro. I have to look this up. That's crazy. I think it's Battle of Something. Like the ship. Who was will- the pirate who used to get naked to scare everybody? Samuel Bellamy. Samuel Bellamy, yeah, bro. Oh. They were. Oh. <laughs> Let's read this real quick. Read it, bro. Read the whole thing. Later, as known as Black Sam, was an English sailor turned pirate during the 18th century. He's best known as the wealthiest pirate in recorded history. And one of the faces of the golden age of piracy, though he was known as pirate, captain listed little more than a year, and his crew captured at least 53 ships. That's Sam Bal- That's Balamy. He took 53 ships, yeah. not the other guy. Called Black Sam in Cape Cod folklore because he skewed the fashionable powdered wig for his... He, he always just wore... Uh, his regular hair. Where does it say that he fucking he got naked though, dude? Because that's what it came up. Black Sam Bellamy, bro. They were like getting butt naked, bro, and charged ships, and they would just freak out because they were all naked, bro. What pirates would get naked? Yeah, I don't have that. What pirates used to get naked? <laughs> Your mom was gonna say. <laughs> what are we doing right now? What are we doing? We're looking up naked pirates. I don't have anything on that, actually. That's crazy. I keep coming up on like the naked truth about pirates and stuff like that. Oh, the wreck of the widow. Yeah, man. When he got together with uh, another another pirate, cause t- together they were um, they were do- they were pillaging together. He goes, they tripped out when that when that f- when those guys took all their clothes off and started charging at the at the merchant ship, but okay, naked. So, yeah, so that's Sam Bellamy, and that's yeah. a famous. Um, that's a really famous uh, um, story because... That's what they call Wild Buccaneer. He, he, he was the most successful. And this is the fucked up... Part. Well, it's not fucked up because he was a pirate and he deserved it at the end. But, I mean, in pirate terms, it's kind of a sad story because... Or he was well hung. He was very well hung. He had a big cock. Um, no, he really hung, right? Oh, they hung him. Um, uh, they... Okay, anyway. He... they The widow was the... the the toughest ship at the time. It had like 64 guns or something like that. It was super fast, super light. It was the most powerful beast on the ocean. And if you owned it, you dominated anybody that came at you. How many guns? Um, probably like 18 probably, huh? How many guns did the widow have? Let's see here. It was the widow maker. It was... Okay, here we go. With a galley. Um, so, okay. With the, here's the... With a, it was an African slave ship. Um, it was it was built in London. Um, it launched out of London. Uh, it was originally captained by Lawrence Prince, who would... Um, and that's who took it, was, was uh, Bellamy. Um, let's see. Propulsion speed, compliant armament. At launch, 18 active guns. Pirate upgrade, 28 active guns. And then uh, at the end, it had 65 guns. So, like, it was... It, and, and slave ships were built different because they were... That ship ain't fucking around, bro. They were super wide, so they floated on the water really well um, because they held human cargo. And, and, they, and so they were made a lot bigger. They were made to fit a lot more people. But he didn't... He didn't really give a fuck about the cargo um, once they got it. I, I don't know if they freed the slaves or got rid of them or killed them, but he wanted the room for guns. He wanted to put so many fucking guns on that thing that it would have killed everything and anybody. 
Um, the fucked up part was is that um, he got caught in a hurricane and the widow was smashed up against the rocks and just about everybody on that ship died because it was too big to, to withstand a storm. Sam Bellamy, um, he was like, was he like during the same time as um, as um, the, the guy we were talking about earlier? Horny Gold, right? Sam Bellamy. Or Sam Bellamy, her stories about Henry Avery got excited. Uh, Sam Bellamy came... Um, like what's Sam his Bellamy origins? Was like a little kid when when Henry Avery was doing shit. So. What's Sam Bellamy's origins? Like where is he from? Um, They're all from England, probably, huh? Let's look that up. We can do that too. Is he related to that like, comedian Ralph Bellamy? <laughs> you mean Bill Bellamy? Yeah. Um, Captain Samuel Bellamy, Black Sam Bellamy, was an English sailor turned pirate during the 18th century. Um. Let's see. Born in Hiddles, Hiddles, Hiddlesley, Devon, Kingdom of England. <sighs> Tough town. Um, Bellamy was born Devon, England, in 1689, and began sailing uh, for the British Royal Navy as a teenager. After traveling to Cape Cod around 1715, this is an interesting story because he was forced into piracy. I think he then went to South to the Florida coast in an effort to locate his sunken treasure fleet. From there, he made his way to the Bahamas, sailing under Benjamin Hornigold. And his second-in-command, Edward Blackbeard Teach, after Hornigold and Teach were voted out of command, Bellamy took captured a vessel of his own before capturing the state-of-the-art slave trade ship, the Witta Galley, in the early spring of 1717. Yeah. Two months later, the vessel was caught in a nor northeaster storm off the coast of Massachusetts and sank. Yeah. Taking Bellamy and most of the crew with it. Yeah, so, on that uh, Ralph, on that uh, Republic, of Bell Republic of Pirates on on Netflix, um, that guy um, Jennings, uh -huh. he puts a gun on Horn and Gold in okay. and Nassau, and um, Blackbeard, a young Blackbeard gets behind Hen Jennings and puts a fucking gun to his head, and he goes, that, then his last name was Thatch. Thatch. And that's fucking Blackbeard. That's Blackbeard. Blackbeard. You know that Blackbeard uh -huh. was suffering from syphilis and gonorrhea so bad yeah. that he would put mercury inside In his, his penis. Dick. Yeah. They found uh, mercury when they, I think they unearthed the, the Queen Anne. Mercury, the bro. They found, in. Um, they found uh, what do you call uh, 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 syringes with mercury in it. And, that, and he was... He he once uh, took a whole he took the whole town of Charleston hostage for about two days, so he could get a doctor to come on and treat all his men for syphilis and gonorrhea before he before they took off back out and plundered. Bla Blackbeard was like Blackbeard's probably the most um, prolific like guy, right? He's the most well known. But there's like so many like misnomers about Blackbeard. Like there's actually no evidence that Blackbeard ever killed anybody. But he's also considered was considered to be the most fearsome pirate because he would walk around with like tar in his beard, right? He would get tar and and gunpowder and he'd mix it together and he'd put it in his beard and twist it, and then he would twist it up. I used to, I used to do that too to kill my crabs. <laughs> I think this would probably get rid of your crabs. And he'd light them on fire all over his beard. So imagine this huge, massive dude with fucking smoke coming out of his beard. And then the other thing he had was he had uh, pistols lined up. Four pistols on each side. So he could go... And imagine this guy's just coming through. How? How? I hate you. <laughs> Not to make sure people saw it. My uncles used to do that to me. How <laughs> behold? Do it again. Do it again. Hey, watch. Watch what he does. Show him. Show him. Show I didn't get into the third one, bro. Oh, yeah, bro. I'd be doing it the whole time. Too, and then bro. they start laughing, and I realize, oh, I'm the idiot here. But we're going to hit ourselves with Blackbeard, but. um. The Henry Avery, he was around first, right? Right. And that would be because he had he no other choice. He had the, no other choice, right? He didn't. He was forced into it himself because they were hungry and they and they basically fought for their freedoms. But in the end, though, he got carried away. But the British was pissed, right? They were sending people to look for him and all that. 
Well, I got this other little fact here. Let's find out. Um, so at the beginning of the Golden Age of Piracy, whoops. How uh, many pirates were around at the Golden Age of Piracy? So at the beginning, different time zones? so the time of Avery, only four naval ships and 25 sloops were patrolling about 30,000 um, miles of water in Damn. the Bahamas. Okay? So when Avery comes along and starts fucking shit up, there's only four big ships and 25 little ships to patrol this massive area. And so he kind of sets the tone for all these guys that are like, oh, shit. There's no power out here. There's nobody controlling what we do. We could fuck up anybody we want. And so for the first like three or four years, because also the Navy now, the Royal Navy has to pump out ships to go protect that region. So it's going to take four years. Imagine, yeah, again, calling the cops in Oakland and them going like, we got to build the cop cars. We got to train the cops. We got to give them arms and weapons. And then we're going to send them out to you. We'll see you in about four years. And and so that's why they 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 this this era popped up. Also because the fucking uh, all these governments we're talking about were tyrannical, and these guys are rebels. That's why that's why we idolize them as Americans. I think is because they're they were true rebels who were really making a difference. Also, um, the way that these pirates were getting away with it because a lot of the the the, the colonies the third the first thirteen colonies. Like the ones in Massachusetts, they were all benefiting from pirating, because they were go go steal and then sell it to the colonists for like real oh cheap. Oh my god! So they yeah. were getting the colonists, the governors, they were getting fat. Right. In Philadelphia, Charleston, bro. Well, this is what fueled kind of the Revolutionary War because, like, you know, because they were uh, they were that they were all those areas were all pirate friendly, huh? Right, yeah. Because they figure, you know what? The British ain't w watching us. Right. And with it, they started bringing in British troops, huh? Right. But the colony were not, they were trying to not send money back, but huh? What they were doing was they were buying the shit that the pirates would, like, uh, would plunder for super cheap from the pirates, and then they'd sell it back to England for the full price that England was going to was gonna pay. Yes. And so England was getting cut out of all that capital. And they were like, fuck that. We got to break down on these guys. And that's really what ended the, the, that huge war between the Dutch, the British, the French, Portuguese, was because they were exhausted. Without that war, because when, during those wars, like the, the I guess World War Zip, Zero, yeah. um, America still hasn't gotten, gotten into um, the New World, huh? Uh, England hasn't, no, yeah, England hasn't made, didn't make it to... Um, Jamestown to 1670, probably right. Yeah, I mean the West. Or 1650. Bro, when you talk about like the West being won and all that stuff, like there's none of that's there at this time. Like, like America, like England and um, Europe didn't make it to um, America per se to the 1600. Right. But this was all Spanish already, huh? It was all. It all began along to the Spanish. Running like, 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 like the, way you, the way you were talking about Sir Francis Drake and him going to Panama and Nicaragua, you're. you're you're talking about like it's already ha like it's they, they were doing that shit forever already. No, yeah, no, no, no. But they were doing that shit in 1500. They were doing it hundreds yeah. of years before England, yeah, right? Yeah, hundreds. So they had mad money already. But England had at the time they did they had the smallest portion of land. But um, they had I'm, I'm talking they, about that Spain had mad gold. Well, here's, here's to, to survive back then because they were taking all the gold from South America. So what happened was that. Spain goes, all right, we're going to break up these countries to give to some of the other guys. Britain, you could have between uh, New York and Florida. Okay, that's yours. But I'm talking about 1,500 right, right no, now. That's what I'm talking about, yeah. But that's 1,500. America didn't get to 1,600. Well, this is what's starting to happen, is that they're coming in and they're discovering this. What they don't know is what the Spaniards know, because the Arr. Spaniards have been there two decades before, that the portion that they're saying we're going to keep is all gold it's all gold and it's worth a ton of money and that's when this all starts to go down because around the 1600s they go hey wait a minute you've had this gold this whole time this is why you guys have so much we want some of that gold and so now you have a fight for these territories where all the gold is 
And and you have it and, and even more important is the territories where you gotta pick up the gold. Because the gold is in Mexico. But you can't get the gold out of Mexico. You have to go all the way down to the Caribbean to pull the gold out. So those territories are the most important as well. And then those territories have gold as well too. It's all it was all about money. It's still all about money. So so you're telling me that the 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 third world country that people say are are poor, yes. they're actually rich in resources. Yes, had had nobody ever plundered Mexico for its gold ever, all the way up until like the fucking late fifties, bro. Uh, Mexico would would have would be a superpower for the amount of money. Actually, the wealth that most of Europe has, all of America has, belonged to Mexico at one time. So all these countries that are first world superpowers all got their gold from mostly Mexico, parts of the Caribbean, parts of South America, but mostly Mexico. Cuba was, uh, and then Cuba and other areas were mostly used for their sugar because at the same time, sugar was just as fucking almost as important. It was like gold, gold, slaves, sugar. Yeah, man, that ship that Henry... I just like if you guys could go look it up, man, and look up that ship that Henry Avery took, because everything that um, Bush just said, they took everything, man. Like they took everything. They are just that ship was heading back with everything that they took, like they like sugar, um, whatever they um fucking dry dry fish from China, yeah. bro. Yeah. Yeah. Those yeah. fools were, imagine, man, those fools were fucking eating and getting drunk for I don't know how long. Well, and that's the thing, man, and this is why the pirate era ended, because we didn't have sugar manufacturing um, everywhere. It was done in one place and then shipped everywhere. They didn't have uh, dyes and colors in every place. It was it was made in Morocco and shipped everywhere. They didn't have uh, dried fish products everywhere. They they were mastered and made in Asia and shipped everywhere. So that's why this was so important because you know, if you're in the new world and you're dude, you don't know what plants are there, you don't know what kind of animals, you don't know all this shit, so you're sourcing all this stuff from overseas. And it's more expensive. It costs a lot of money and that's what ended piracy was basically like we started refining our own sugar in, in, our, in places. We started making dyes at home. We started doing things, you know, after we built the colonies and cities became more progressive. I can see why um, those pirates dressed the way they dressed, bro, from, pl- from stealing boats and taking all their, their linen and their yeah. clothing. So why is, he, why is this guy looking like aristocrat? Because that's the kind of clothes they stole earlier. Um, the... Um, the thing with that is, is that the mo- guy who made that really popular was Jack Rackham, Calico Jack, and he was there called you go. Calico Jack because you know, Calico Cat is like different colors because he was very colorful man. He would walk around with an orange coat and. Did he just walk around with attitude, bro? When they showed up to a uh, NASA or somewhere where where they knew they like Captain Hook or they knew they had money. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, and that's what the they pirates, own these towns. Pirates huh? started to do that. They would yeah. So that's what I'm saying. The, the colonies. They made money when these pirate ship pirates showed up with all that cash, bro. Cause they were they were spending money, bro. They were buying shoes, they were buying clothes, they were buying land with that gold, bro. So the colonists, cause they, they these pirates couldn't go to England and spend that no, money. Right. So the the uh, the the new the thirteen the new world the thirteen colony was a wide open, bro. Right. What you just showed up with gold? I want to buy two slaves. Right. Yeah, and that's the thing is that they didn't have shit here. They didn't have clothing makers. They didn't have tailors. And if they did, you still had to get the clothes and cloth from fucking way over there. It, it, um, so, th- I mean, that's what, that's what made it so prevalent was that you had nobody patrolling the waters. You had fuck tons of ships coming over with lots of stuff and slaves, sugar, spices, metals, jewels, diamonds, everything. Because also the earth is rich with this shit. Nobody's digging this up at this time. Now, gold is really scarce. At some point, we're going to run out of it. Um, There's certain metals and stuff that we're going to run out of. But at the time, the fucking earth is abundant. It's funny how the the big wigs knew what gold was, but 
we didn't know what it was, but we're digging it for them. Right. No, and that's the thing, man. So, like, you know, when you talk about conquistadors and explorers, you know, they roll up with ships and guns, and they, they're dressed up, and they have uniforms. And there's you see these, these people, naked people? They see these naked people with these huge chunks of gold in their faces. And the Incans and the Mayans, it's not that they didn't value the gold, because they did, but they didn't value it in money in terms of, like, money. They valued it in terms of, like, these are our, our idols, these are our gods, these are, like, uh, things that we use that are precious to us. Like, it's not like they were like, oh, it's just gold laying around my house. It was their jewelry. It was their fucking idols of their gods. It was like in their temples and stuff like that. And these fucking guys come along and are like, well, we use it for other shit. So fuck you. We're taking it. Imagine, dude, you're, you're, you're like a, a merchant, dude. A rich. These merchants that were selling these ships. They were not the owners of the stuff they were carrying, huh? They were working for somebody rich in England who was getting mad, huh? Right. There's no, bro, there's no owner. It's like fucking, like, uh, like an owner. And that ship probably had stuff that belonged to different people, huh? Like a regular, like a regular yes. shipping ship, right? Right. Yeah. It was like Amazon. Yeah. They, they stole his sugar. They stole my slaves. Right. Yes. Oh, bro. Slaves were like, that was the thing, man, is like, uh, Slaves was like a big, big deal, and people stole slaves all the time. And, you know, there's this whole misnomer that fucking Blackbeard or some fucking pirate took over a slave ship and was like, let's free these slaves and make them all pirates, and now we're going to rule the waters. That never fucking happened. Slaves were cargo. They cost money. And if you're a pirate, you're not going to just, like, free your money. You, you know, and, and that was the other thing is you want to keep as many as possible alive. And uh, man, the slave ship shit was the darkest shit that I read. That was crazy, man. Cause the the people that were that were fr that were in charge of the slave ship, what were those guys? Privateers or just those merchants? Were, uh, those were merchants. Those were slave merchants. And um, they they, they uh, not to, we could do the history of slave later, but we could add on to this. But they were also hired from a big shot somewhere else, huh? Oh yeah. Well, who, I mean, never yeah, probably, they, who never probably touched a, a boat or a slave, huh? Dude, the guys that owned the Indian Trading Company were probably the most evil fucking people on the planet. And they never so left the So it was the same people, right? They never left the comfort of their home. Yeah, totally. And at the same time, bro, it's not like... And they could... um, they were Because I know that um, from watching this, this show I, I watched called... Um, it's called um, Frontier. I think it's called Frontier. Okay. And this one deals with um, uh, um, the fur trade in like in in like in the East Coast, like the, during the Canadian days, Canada and America when they were like trading fur and beaver pelts, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And um, I forgot my point. I was gonna go deep, bro. <laughs> I was gonna blow away minds, dog. <laughs> Do you remember what his point was? Nobody knows. <laughs> We're all alone right now. <laughs> this weed is really good. Yeah, man. So, um, beaver pelts, bro. Right, yeah. Like frontiersmen in America. Yeah. Walking through the forest, like with like a fucking coonskin hat. And like a leather thing, and they're wearing moccasins, and they're cool with the Native Americans. <clears throat> Just the Mohicans, bro. Yeah. And and uh, the early settlers. Early settlers, dude. Yeah, that's basically what the Buccaneers were the the earlier version of that. Yeah, and and, and they would trade fur like cash. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's uh, a lot of it was bartering, especially over here because money didn't really mean much. And they were skinning, bro, buffalo, bro. The native couldn't believe it. They were fucking slaughtering buffaloes. Like, and then they were just using the fur and leaving the meat behind. Yeah, they couldn't believe it. So, no, because imagine, bro, these people are like, eat, they're like, you know, they're living off the land. Natives are everything that we say they were. And to them, a buffalo is everything it's weapons, it's food, it's fucking hides for like uh, keeping yourself warm. You know, the guts is to you give to your dogs or you give it to the other animals in, in to feed. You read oh. the fat to keep you warm. So in um, the show Frontier, yeah, the main 
company there is the Indian trading t- company. Indian trading company. Yeah. They're in charge of the fur and all the trading. Right. Like you gotta go through them to trade anything. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So there's this guy that's hardcore in that in that show. And he's in charge of he's he's high, he's he works for the Indian trade company. And he has the power to have his own red coat army, bro. Oh to pat- yeah. To patrol his his the interest of the British Indian Indian tea company. Right. Yeah. So when when his shit was stolen, he had to go send his his fifteen troops that he has to go fuck up those natives who stole it, bro. Right. Yeah, and that's the thing, man. Is out there. And it's, it's like they have. It's like having a, a your own company with your own army. Right. And pretty much doing whatever you want in a new world. Because that's how it worked back then, you know. And even still, like man, like a lot of this, ha- the, lo- like the Captain Avery situation happened a lot. Where it's like, imagine you're controlling this ship. You know, now, if, like, let's say you're in charge of a naval ship now or a military battalion. You're constantly reporting back to the government through your phone, through electronics, right? And, and so there's an immediate connector to you and your government. But if you're out at sea for fucking three months coming across <clears throat> the new world and you're creating a great relationship with your men... And all of a sudden, the government doesn't do what you want them to do, or they don't give you the money or whatever. You're like, fuck you guys then. Now I have my own personal army. I'm going to wage my own war. That happened all the time, especially dudes with fuck tons of money. And as far as the Indian trading company, that's totally, that that jives. Meanwhile, the king is living large, huh? The largest living, dude. The largest. And that was, and, and that was what caused, I mean, again, the American Revolution was like the king... Because the other thing, too, man, is at the end of the day, these territories aren't for future residents and we're going to own these countries. We're going to take as much of the gold as we can and we're going to leave this place barren and fucked up and get the fuck out of there. So they didn't give a fuck about what happened with the city at fucking, you know, in Sao Paulo or what, you know, what's going on at fucking in Havana. Jamaica. Or in Havana. They just... Hey, Puerto just, Rico. Just keep it till we get our goal. Just keep things cool. We don't give a fuck about your politics, but at the same time, these guys who are living there are like, well, I'm going to be a mayor of this city. I'm going to be a governor of this city. You know? And so there was a big disconnect. And they were, you know, and it's like the king never even... Probably didn't even know where, the, where fucking Havana was. And to them, that bothered them. You know? It's just like keep, even, the mon- keep the money flowing, man. Just keep the money flowing. Like he didn't, it's like, imagine, bro, like, he had all these explorers going out there, and he goes, oh, he, all they did was fund it. Right. Just and funding. got rich. Just funding. Eating Fun- cakes. Well, dude, Hernan Cortez, going back to Hernan Cortez, he was actually, uh, he was supposed to be put Your to uncle. death because of some crimes that he committed. He'd stole some money from the government. His saving grace was that he was an explorer, and they needed him to go check out the Americas. Who's the Jolly Roger? Um, well, you mean the flag? I thought it was a person. There is a whole thing. A chain of bar of restaurants, of bars, right? Okay, Jolly Roger so Inns. The three origins of the Jolly Roger. There's three different origins. Please. And one of them has to do with a, a pirate. So um, the most believed uh, reason why we call it Jolly Roger is because. He's Jolly? Old Roger was our, was the British reference for the devil. And, and so you put it on your flag to say not so devil. jolly, eh? Um, but it was also a French term. It, it they also could. There was a belief that it came from the French term uh, "yale rouge," which means uh, "bloody flag," and and it it got anglicized or Americanized to Jolly Roger. The third one is Ali Raja was a pirate from the East Indies. And um, he was a Middle Eastern pirate. He was like a big deal. He was considered like the fucking pirate of pirates in the like fucking 1500s. And so he was, and, but he was like, um, he was legendary all throughout pirate lore. Um, and so uh, they, Ali Raja was his name, but they, but they, they confused it and always called him Jolly Roger. So he was a pirate. So that's that's one of them. But what? But experts believe that it was reference to the devil, Old Roger. So that's so the he Jolly was like, Roger. He was like Jesus Malverde of the pirate lore. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the 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 um, 
the songs, man, like who that guy we mentioned earlier. Yeah. The the, what? The sea shanties. Sea shanties. Yeah. And the, the, the word wench, is that from a pirate or that's from the, 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 the other just, British uh, word? Just, it's just an 18th century word to, um, like that was used towards like your, like women, older women. How about when um, when pirates say or, or merchants or Navy officers back in those days would say they saw a mermaid? Where did that come from? Um, the belief is, is that, you know, pirates would hear like whales. <laughs> and that they believed and, there you go and that between sirens between that and drinking too much um they start seeing anything that they would start and they're horny bro you're this horny dude you haven't seen women in three months and you're out at sea and you hear these cries out in the ocean so you're imagining this like fucking sexy bird fish with tits i guess that makes a lot of sense man you're a genius you're a pirate genius what up? What up? It's funny, man. Like, the pirates would not have a woman in the ship, but they'll name the ship after a woman. After women, and they would refer to him as her. I didn't know. I didn't look up. I, I did. If I did, I don't remember where the, why they name him after women and why they refer to ships in this in uh with a with a feminine pronoun. Because I'm like here in America, man. Like. Shitty neighborhoods. They name their hotel, their apartments after after nice places. Right. Where you live at the Chateau Marmont. That's and that's a bad neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> Where you live at? I live at the Nassau Estates. <laughs> so tell us more, bro. Um. Well, what more? Did, did we read all, did we read all the codes? We did all the codes. Um, I was gonna save lingo. For I want to know about right here, man, on your your magazine right here. Yeah. They break they break down the body of the ship. Okay. And it's fucking like a because you, you know when you when you go under I, I've been on top of a pirate ship right, right. here. The, the Queen's and Revenge that one right there. Yeah, that's the Queen Anne's Revenge. Okay. Show, show everybody in the photo. And that's let me see. And that's a regular. That's a, this is a brigantine. Let me see. You know, the one that people put, draw, they put, put together. I think that's a galleon. They, they put in a boat. Does huh? it say it's a galleon or a brig? The storage. So supplies were kept below deck. Typically, heavy items like water water barrels were stored midship, double as ballast. Yeah. The captain's cabin. The artifacts. Ballast is uh, balance. Like, um, you can't have too much forward. So if you have too much weight in the back, you shift... Um, you shift some of the cargo to the front. That, that um, has 20 cannons, bro. 20 cannons was and with the Queen Anne's Revenge. So these boats were like, how, like how many men? 125? Less? Um, anywhere from like 15 to 150 men, depending on what ship you had. Man, so those British ships, the, the, the official British ships, they were all in uniform, huh? 125 men on this ship right here. Um, the British ships, they had a uniform. They were all uniform, all red, yeah. looking fucking clean. They huh? call them sloppies. That's what they call them lobsters, huh? No. I made that up. Did you? Yeah, they called them sloppies. I thought lobster would be a better name. <laughs> but they probably, those guys probably never we'll seen a lobster. A, we'll put in a note. Uh, the red coats. The captain's quarters in the stern were better protected during the storm and easy to defend in case of mutiny. Uh, so yeah, yeah. I mean, um, with the so you know, you had you had anywhere from one to three uh, what's called mass. Those are those huge poles in the middle, and that's where the fucking sails come off of, right? And the more sails, the the faster the ship. And then you had three sections of sails. You had like a smaller one in the bottom, a huge one in the middle, and then another smaller one at the top. And then if you even and then. On the mizzen mast, which is the very top, you had an even smaller one, which is called the flag. I think it was called the flag. You were flag. telling me um, um, before we started that the pirates never wore the three-angle hat. Yeah, they didn't wear the tricorn because um, it didn't exist at the time, and it was mostly worn by fucking... When it did exist, it was worn by soldiers and shit. So, so even Captain Crunch hat doesn't exist. There was exist. one pirate who had a tricorn. And, and Hector Heathcote. <laughs> 
<clears throat> and he made it famous for everybody else in in lore. And it was and and it, you know someone wrote a story about him and described that's what he was wearing. And then now that's what pirates. But pirates mostly wore beanies, or what looked like baseball caps made out of straw. That was it. They didn't have fucking. They didn't even wear uh, scarves. Sometimes they'd wear. So what they would wear though is they would wear like a piece of metal over the head, what was called a skull cap, and then they would put a hat over it. So in battle, if they got hit with something, ah, uh, damn, yeah, it would it would hit the metal. But yeah, like most of the pirate gear you see, like fucking buccaneers didn't have boots. You know that whole symbol for the fucking bu- the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Completely inaccurate. First of all, for all of pirates. Secondly, buccaneers were barefooted or wrapped um, their feet in in um, like skins. And they would walk around like that. Yeah, because I've seen some pirate movie where some of the sailors had no shoes, bro. Most of them didn't wear shoes. Like, what? Like because you didn't have grip back in the day. And if you're going to wear boots on a fucking wet wooded dock, you're going to slide everywhere. So, like, it wasn't practical. What was, what was accurate was splinter. that they were baggy. They were very baggy clothes because they, they needed to have room. You know, to For work, guns. climbing up ladders. They were doing shit all the time. Um, the big gaudy belts. Uh, for the swords, those were true, but those were stolen um, from like uh, conquistadors. So if you took a big Spanish galleon, you know, and you were now the captain, you would walk around with his belt on. I had to. I had to, bro. So what's up, Captain Bush? Want to keep going, or we'll do another episode? Let's do another episode okay. because if I want to get into lingo on the next one, and we don't have a lot of time. All right, to do that on this lingo, one. gringo. So we're gonna talk about how pirates talk, like, and then also, um, I'm still trying to find this. Also, let me give a shout out to Fat Ralph helping me do all this research, um, because we're still trying to track this one down. We use a lot of our lingo in today. Uh, a lot of our words today come from pirate terms or nautical terms at that time. And so I'm trying to find out what we use, like false flag operation or cat out of the bag type stuff. You know, so that's what we're going to do next. So Put another strip on the Barbie, Buccaneer. I think that's an Australian All term. Right. <laughs> History for fools. Arr. Arr.